Welcome to California Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are coming to you from our Sacramento Bureau and we are joined by Senator George Runner. He is a member of the Board of Equalization. And so I want to speak with you not only as a member of the board, but as a former legislator, both mm -hmm. in the Senate and the Assembly. You've seen good times. You've seen bad times fiscally. Right. I guess one could argue we're in good times right now. Or are we? Well, I, you know, they're, they're a little bit manufactured right now. Okay. There's two issues going on right now that have created this surplus that you right. hear talked about right now. Um, the first one is Californians voted themselves a tax increase last they year. They did. And so as a result of that, uh, you know, additional revenues have come into the state of California. Now, the thing to remember about those is those are all temporary. They right. go away. And so... What's you, you, interesting, though, if I may say, uh -huh. is... They go away. You're right, absolutely right. right. They get sunset. Both, both income tax right. and sales tax. But yet, the CLA predicts that there will be a budget surplus of almost $10 billion in 2018, which is after at least one of the uh, taxes right. sunset, which is so surprising well, to me. And, and again, part, part, part of the issue, too, is that part of the other side of that, the equation of right. where money is coming from, is increase in capital gains revenue right. in the state of California. Of course, that Blessing goes, and a curse. Well, that goes back yeah. to California's fiscal structure, which is we, we have very a lot of income tax revenue that comes in the state, and we, and we doubly hit those who earn a lot of money. And as a result of that, during good times, or when, when the stock market's up, or real estate is up, people sell. And as a result of that, then there's extra revenue coming in. But it, as we've learned in the last few years, it's, it's, it's not very predictable. And so, I, I, I mean, I've been here long enough that yes. I don't worry about what projections are in 2018. Fair enough. Um, you know, and but but the reality is, right now we do have some extra money, and so the question is, how do we spend that money? What do we invest it in? And that that becomes a real issue. For and us. let's talk about that. The governor has proposed a couple of items. He's looking to pay down what he calls the wall of debt. Right. He's looking to create a rainy day fund. We haven't heard about a cut in taxes. I mean, one could argue. Well, you know, and I, again, I, I'm not sure with the issue of cut in taxes is the key issue right now because right now I think we need to just be preparing ourselves for when it is that those taxes fall off in the next couple okay. of years. Because what you are hearing, unfortunately, is you're hearing some folks in the sac in, 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 in the capital and some ele statewide elected folks saying, well, maybe we need to keep those taxes on. Mm. And so, to me, that's my greater concern. My greater concern, quite frankly, isn't whether or not we're going to get a tax cut as much as it is, are we going to learn to live within our means so that people actually are going to see these taxes fall off when, they were, when they're supposed to. Well, let's talk, though, about the rainy day fund, mm -hmm. because that is a mechanism that I thought we had adopted in 2004 when the voters passed, I think it was Prop 58. Right. We had a rainy day fund for a short time. It got rated very quickly. We have not replenished that rainy day fund. So why is it we're talking about creating another rainy day fund? Well, What's wrong with this the, rainy the day fund? The problem is that uh, the legislature in its history has uh, used these rainy day funds, I think, as more gimmicks than reality. Mm -hmm. They really are not committed to putting away money. And the problem is there's a lot of pressure. When there's extra money all of a sudden sitting on the table, the idea of setting some right. of that aside for something else in the future versus, oh, we got all these needs now, uh, the problem is you've got you know 120 legislators right. over there who want to spend, right. all, many of them want to spend it now. But the governor has been firm. I mean, I've heard him be called the best Republican governor we could ever wish for by a member of the Republican caucus. So be that as it may, you know, what do you think about the proposal you know, for I, the rainy day fund by the governor? You know, and spending with governors is an interesting issue. I, I right. remember um, I, was, I was vice chair of budget in yes. the assembly representing Republicans then yes. in the budget negotiations with Gray Davis. Ah, uh, yes. And I can remember going into Gray Davis's office and we were talking about budget and he looked at me and he said, George, I'm going to be your best friend for Republicans <laughs> exactly. when it comes to Let's spending. Let's continue the conversation when we come back. We're okay. speaking with George Runner, a member of the Board of Equalization. For our viewers on HLN, thanks for joining us. For our other viewers, we'll be right back. And that story is somewhat humorous, but I understand it. I mean, you do see that Gray Davis has been looking. Well, he had been looking. I don't want to talk about Gray Davis. Let's talk about no, the current governor. The, here's the, yeah. the, what the yeah. transition here is going to be, and that is the problem is governors have to deal with our legislatures. Yes. And that's going to be the issue, and that is whether or not Jerry Brown will be able to actually curb the spending appetite. Well, so, Senator, let's continue the conversation right. about spending and the pressures that governors feel. Yeah. What is your sense of Governor Brown and his attempts to kind of quash 
which some believe is a desire by the legislature to spend the surplus. Well, yeah, right, and and again, and, and you know, you use spending two different ways too. And then there's there's spending that you can spend because you all of a sudden have a lot of money coming right. in, and you can spend it one time, just like at home. Of course, you know, so you, know, you get some extra money in, in 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 a given month, in a given year, and you go out and buy one thing. Right. Or one time, right, one time spending. Of or you go ahead and get some money coming in one time, and you say, "I think I want to buy this new car, and I think I want to pay for it over five years." And let me ask you about that because there is a proposal by the Democrats in the legislature to create what's known as TK transitional kindergarten. Right. I think a lot of folks believe it's a worthy plan philosophically. You know, get kids in school earlier. But Governor Brown did not include it in his January proposal. And the concern of some, and I would guess all you as well, is that it's a new program yeah. that could cost a billion dollars. It's a very expensive program, and and you, hear, and you got to remember what we're doing there too. I mean, it's about it's. I don't have any problem with the idea of trying to focus on children who you four year olds who and you're are an having, educator. Yeah, <laughs> who, who who have who have who need some extra help and ah. focus on those kids. That makes sense. But to all of a sudden undo the whole program where you have right now many families who are paying out of their own pockets for those programs, shift that then to a state paid for program, right. government or taxpayer paid for program, um, that has ongoing expenses to it every year, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. And again, it's not like California schools are stellar. <laughs> One um, could argue. Yeah, you know, I mean, right. it's kind of like, is that really, are, right. are we doing so well everywhere else in our education system that we should add another year? But it's an example of that one-time versus ongoing. and. It's, it's a big ticket item. And that's the problem that the governor will face. So let's talk more about the rainy day fund though, because what the governor has proposed right out of the box is funding this fund, the rainy day fund with $1.6 billion as a down payment. Mm -hmm. Is that enough in your mind? Well, again, I, I think that's a good start for that. I, I, at this point, I'm, I think anything we can put in a rainy day fund is the right thing to do. Okay. I'm more concerned with the base spending that we're going to be doing and whether or not then, because it's one thing to have a rainy day fund, but it's another thing to have a rainy day fund that you may be having to tap next year. Right, of course. Or the year after that. It should be for these big economic problem times, not something that we can just maybe borrow next year when, because we over budgeted this year. What about the wall of debt though? The governor has talked about that countless times. At a minimum, we have about $25 billion in loans and deferred payments. Right. That doesn't even take into account well, under un, unfunded pension and that's, and that's why it is when people talk about the surplus, they're really not really understanding right. the whole commitments that were made during the time when the spending was going on. We actually borrowed, took, stole money all over the place. Uh, and we're not paying that back. And so the idea of trying to get some of that off the table is important, but we need to be getting more of it. That's why, quite frankly, we shouldn't be expanding programs right now. We should be trying to figure out how to get our feet back on the ground so and get I us dealing in that. really get into the weeds, though, and get a sense from you as someone who's been looking at the budgets for got over a decade. Should we be paying down more of the tangible loans and deferred payments, or should we really be looking at these unfunded liabilities, these underfunded pensions? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to pay back the money that you owe now. Okay. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, I, the, we, you got to do both. Fair enough. You got to do both, but quite frankly, if you can't take care of the debt that you know that is right, the short term, the stuff that you move money around, and you can't take care of that, then it's pretty clear you're not prepared to deal with the big problems. No, I hear you. And so I think it's important for us to kind of dip, to get that first, a recognize what our big problems are, but then that's why it is that we need to get the spending under control. Mm -hmm. We need to figure out how to do the kinds of things we can do with, do with the, the amount of money that we have rather than more. Okay, so we pay down the immediate loans, but now we have the question of the underfunded pensions to the tune of over $200 billion. Right. Sir, that is very frightening for anyone to hear. You know, and right, and the, and the problem is if you just look at the issue of the budget and revenue coming in as kind of the only part of the pie, then you, you, you'll get really frustrated. The other thing we've got to look at is how do we grow the budget? Without putting in new right. taxes, right. how do we get businesses and to come and grow? How do we get, <laughs> how do we get people? Right. I talk to retired folks who are, have good pensions who are leaving the state of California. And, the, and there's a lot of folks out there that are looking when they are when they're when they're when they're able to go when their feet are free, and they you know they, whether it's a pension program right. or a job that they can move, they're gone. Okay. And that's the concern I think we Please need to look at. Please come back and let's talk about this issue. His okay. name is Senator George Runner. He is a member of the Board of Equalization. My name is Brad Palmer. This is California Edition.